OK, so in this video, I'm just going to cover off the gear that I would take along to the Bicycle Network's Great Victorian Bike Ride. Now, the Bicycle Network recommend taking two bags, one a bag for your camping gear and another bag for your personal effects and clothing. So I'm going to go through both of these bags. And in the camping bag, the first item is the is a bedroll. Now this is a standard bedroll, uh, camping bedroll. Uh, you roll it out, um, blow it up with a bit of air, and uh, that acts as an insulating layer between you and the ground, between your sleeping bag and the ground. Just keeps you warmer at night. So that's quite important, important item. Uh, we'll come, uh, we'll cover that item off a little bit later on. So the next item is the sleeping bag. Now the sleeping bag, um, look I just, uh, I've got a personal preference towards the more the, the down, duck down, uh, goose down sleeping bags, they compact down nice, uh, nice and tight and uh, they're really warm, uh, a lot more warmer than the weight to weight than the, um, than the synthetic bags. Uh, the only problem with them is that if they do get wet they're a lot colder so it's really important to keep them, keep them fairly dry. Now outside the sleeping bag, there's a dual purpose with the, with the bag that you use for the sleeping bag. I use it as a pillow. So this bag here that the sleeping bag is in, I'll um, put my clothing into it at night. Um, I'll put a t-shirt over the top of it and that acts as, my, acts as my pillow. And the reason why I use a t-shirt over the top of it is just to help. Um, you know, I don't want to be sleeping against the nylon, I just want to sleep against cotton like I normally do. So I just put a t-shirt over the top of it and that just makes it nice and comfortable for me. So, so that's the sleeping bag. Uh, and last item out of this bag. And just a tent. Now these compress down. This is a standard uh, camping tent. Uh, nylon. It's got a tent fly. Uh, and, and, a, and then the actual tent inner. And the reason for that is that the tent fly, the water, uh, if it's raining, it will uh, hit the tent, uh, tent fly and then it'll just run off and it keeps the tent itself nice and, uh, nice and dry. So it's a standard uh, tent and they assemble really easily. Good idea to uh, set them up before you go so you kind of understand how they will work if you're new to them. Uh, and um, if not, there's usually plenty of people that can help you there anyway. So, so that's the tent. All right, so then just a bit of my camping gear. Now the first item here is it's just a face cloth and I actually use this just to clean up my dishes uh, after I finish with them at night uh, and in the morning. So just a little face cloth. It's just a sports cloth, um, you know, toothpaste, uh, detergent. Now the detergent uh, dual purpose for this as well. I use this to clean my washing uh, at night and also um, I use it uh, to clean up my dishes at night and in the morning as well. So detergent. Uh, sunscreen, that's really important obviously, you're out in the sun all day, just remember your sunscreen, 30 plus, uh, underarm deodorant, very important, toothbrush, uh, shampoo, uh, headlight, now uh, this is just a little headlight, uh, I like taking this away when I'm camping, uh, if I need to go to the toilet at night, I can see around the campsite, use it for when I'm reading at night as well. So a headlight, uh, a spork, now you, you don't have to go for one of these, you can just normal uh, cutlery set. Uh, I like the spork, it's got a fork and a knife and a spoon, all in one, it just makes it nice and easy and light. Um, Paw pour ointment, now I use, this, uh, I use this down under, it just helps reduce the um, chance of uh, rash. Uh, and uh, I'll put it on in the morning before I go out for a ride. Uh, pull pour ointment, it's great, it's really good. It's actually quite good for putting on grazers as well if you, if you do fall off your bike, pull pour ointment. All right. Um, uh, shaving cream for the guys. Now, I don't think I've got my razor in here, but need the razor as well. All right. Uh, cup and toilet paper. All right. Plate. All right, not planning on eating a lot of food, just a little plate. Uh, soap. 
and uh, earplugs. Now, uh, I always take earplugs away with me when I travel, and the reason for that is pretty obvious. Uh, it just helps reduce the amount of ambient noise around at, at night, uh, and just helps me sleep better. So, I um, always put them in. And you'll be in a camping environment, so you know you, you might be sleeping next to somebody that's a little bit more noisier. Um, great for people that are snoring next to you. I find that these work a treat. So, earplugs are really good. Okay. So the next one is uh, just a general bag, and in this side here, I've got uh, a couple of drink bottles. All right. Now it's really important to make sure that these are full of water uh, before you go on your ride in the morning. All right. So drink bottles, uh, and then I've got a little bag here, uh, just with my um, my in-ride food. So I've got a few gels and uh, sports bars and those sort of things. So just there. <coughs> Now on this side I've got uh, my cycling shoes. Now if, you, if you're just riding in your ordinary shoes and you obviously you will just be taking them. If you are taking your cycling shoes, do remember to check that you've actually got them. It's amazing how many times I run events and uh, people have forgotten their cycling shoes. And cycling shoes are a real issue if you do forget them because they're very personal. Uh, generally, you've got your own specific uh, cleat that you want to put on them. Positioning is really important to that. Uh, these ones here, my ones have inserts in them. Um, and just a tip, when I'm flying on an aeroplane, I always make sure that my cycling shoes are in with my hand luggage. Um, and uh, the reason for that is that if my main luggage goes missing, I've still got my hand luggage with me. And um, it means I don't lose my cycling shoes. So if, I'm, you know, ride, if I've got an event uh, that I'm riding in, it involves airplane travel, Always make sure the cycling shoes go in uh, my hand luggage. All right. So uh, the other thing in the side pocket is uh, glasses, sunglasses, uh, in a fairly hard case to help protect them. Uh, I've, uh, I've got two lenses. So I've got the glasses themselves uh, with a fairly light tinted lens and then another lens uh, a bit darker for the, for the more sunnier days uh, and just a little bit of uh, just a lens cloth, you know, just to clean them up. Uh, again, hard case, all right, so that's it. And then we'll get into to the clothing now. When I go away on cycling trips, I always seem to be taking more, more cycle clothing than I do normal clothing, but it's just the way it sort of pans out. So the first thing is helmet. Now, try not to forget your helmet, but the good thing about helmets is you usually pick up one, uh, you know, from a bike shop. Make sure that um, it's got a safety sticker in it, the Australian standard safety sticker in it. Uh, those are the only ones that, uh, that are legal in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, you can't ride on the road without one, so it's very important that you do have a helmet with you. All right, so take that along. Uh, and then the clothing, all right. So most of this uh, clothing that I'll be taking, because I'll be obviously wearing clothing, so I'll be uh, taking that clothing with me. Uh, and I'll have that clothing uh, obviously on when I'm wearing uh, you know, my casual clothing after the event. But when I'm riding, there's a whole lot of cycling clothing that I take along. Uh, the first thing that's really important is the base layer. All right, so, so this is just a san standard uh, cycling base layer. It's, a fairly, it's made out of fairly light material. It's designed to wick away sweat. Um, and it also acts, and I always, w I always ride, no matter how hot it is, I always ride with one of these um, because it acts as a barrier between you and the road. So if you do fall off your bike and you, and you uh, get grazed, this just help, helps um, helps reduce the amount of friction between you and the road because you just kind of slide between this and the jersey so and the road so it just just has a little bit of protection so it's a bit of a safety device as well now there's two types there's this one here that I wear on the hotter days um, but if it's below about 16 degrees then I will wear the merino wool base layer now I'm a big fan of merino wool it's a great fabric um, and one of the reasons why I really love it is that it doesn't get smelly when you wear it a few times. So it's really good when you go away um, on trips. And I usually take two of these. So there's two in this bag. All right. And um, you know you can wear these on the bike, and then you can wear them as a t-shirt casually after the event. So dual purpose uh, garment, and um, you know great merino wool. So good stuff. Now, now next. So I would take two nicks along with me. Cycling shorts. Okay, so these are the standard cycling shorts. 
Uh, there's a couple of versions of these. You can go for the, the just the standard shorts with no bib on them. I prefer the bibs. They're a little bit more comfortable. Um, and they have a chamois on the inside for those that are uninitiated with cycling shorts. They've got an insert now. We call it a chamois, but uh, it's not actually made out of chamois. They used to be made out of chamois, but now they're made out of synthetic material. So they've got this padding in there. It just helps reduce the chance of chafing. So they're really good. Um, and you know, I use them in conjunction with my pawpaw ointment and uh, that just helps reduce any, any issues down under. All right. Now you don't wear these with, um, with underpants. All right. So you go commando in these and, um, and there's also just standard sort of uh, casual sort of cycling shorts as well that you, can, that you can buy. They've got a chamois insert again, don't wear underpants with them um, and, um, and they're a little bit more casual so you can actually step off the bike and sort of wander around and they've got a short with an insert in them. So, um, so that's cycling nicks. Now the other thing about cycling nicks is I take two if not three, so there's two in here at the moment. Uh, and the reason why I would take more than one pair is because you want to change them every day. You want to make sure to reduce the chance of um, you know, infection and that sort of thing. You, you make sure that these are, are replaced, you know, like you, a clean pair every morning all right, before you go on your ride. So, One's, uh, one's being worn while the other one's are drying, okay? So that's cycling mix. Now cycling jerseys. So there's a couple of types of cycling jerseys I take along. There's, there's a standard uh, cycling jersey. Now these are a lightweight fabric designed to wick away um, sweat from you. Uh, and uh, they've got the pockets in the back. I like the ones with the full length zip in them uh, for the really hot days. So you can zip it right down, zip it back up again. All right, short sleeve. So I've got two of those, one, two, okay. Uh, and then I've got a long sleeve for, for days when it's uh, a bit wet or quite cold. Uh, then I'd go for the long sleeve jersey. Now these long sleeve jerseys, same thing, full length zip in them, uh, and pockets at the back. All right, for all your cycling stuff. And um, and these, this one here is uh, the standard sort of winter weight long sleeve jersey so it's got a fleecy lining to it so instead of being a thinner material it's got a got a more of a uh, a fleecy sort of warmer thermal sort of layer to it so quite nice and warm uh, now for the cooler mornings I wear a, a wind vest okay so the thing is that cycling clothing is designed to to uh, have the wind rush through it and wick away your sweat but on the cooler days that's that's going to actually cool you down too quickly and you're going to get quite cold so the wind vest is just a sleeveless vest. It's got a nylon front on it. It's usually vented at the back. Uh, this has got a sort of a vented fabric on it. Uh, full length zip again, all the way through. And uh, these, are, these are great. So the great thing about these is that they're small. You can, when you don't need them, you can put them in your pocket. Uh, and, um, and the other thing about these is that when you're climbing up hills, you can zip them down. When you're getting a bit hot and when you're when you're uh, going down hills, when it's, um, when it's quite cold, when you can get quite cool, uh, you just zip them up again. So that's a cycling vest. Um, and, uh, you know, the other thing I've got in here is a cycling raincoat. Now, if you, if you just wanted to take one, then I would take the cycling raincoat. And this is just a standard cycling raincoat. Again, dual purpose, you can wear it on the bike and off the bike, so you can wear it as casual gear uh, if, it's, if it's raining a little bit. Uh, I usually take both, but um, you know, you, if you wanted to take just one, then the raincoat would be the choice, all right? Because that's going to be a lot more protective. Uh, and this is just the standard cycling, cycling tight jacket. Usually, there's, they're a little bit longer at the back uh, to cover your um, behind a little bit. Uh, full length zip, and this one's showerproof, waterproof, uh, and and also acts as a you know wind vest type. So that's really good. Uh, cycling cap. Now a cycling cap I wear when it's really cold and I also wear when it's really hot. And the reason for that is that when it's really cold it just acts as an insulating layer and I wear it underneath my helmet. Um, when, it's, when it's really hot, uh, there's two reasons why I wear it. The first one is to help prevent sun, um, sunburn because obviously helmets these days have got holes in them. So, um, so that just helps stopping my head from getting really badly sunburned. And the other thing is that it helps wick away 
the sweat. So instead of sweat running down you know, into my eyes and stuff, uh, I would wear this and that just wicks it away and it actually drops off the peak of the cap, which is great, and it just drips off the front of it, uh, away from my face. So, so they're really good. And look, you can wear them after the event uh, to keep your head uh, from getting sunburnt uh, um, after the event as well, all right? So cycling gloves. <coughs> now again, uh, cycling gloves, you know, two purposes to these. I never go riding without them. They're a very important uh, item of clothing that I like to wear. And the two reasons for that is, the first is that they protect you. You know, if you fall off your bike, it saves you from scratching up your hands. Um, and the other thing is that they usually have a little bit of padding in them and that just reduces the amount of fatigue that you're going to get through your hands on the longer rides. So those are cycling gloves. Um, and they also actually stop your hands from getting sunburned as well. Um, so, so those are the cycling gloves. All right. Now uh, cycling socks. Now cycling socks are a little bit different to normal socks and the reason for that is that one is that, again, they're made out of fabric that wicks away sweat and is quite aerated. Uh, so, they're, so, they, um, so they're cooler on hot days. Now, the other thing about cycling socks is that they're, they're quite thin. And the reason for that is that you know, you're pushing through the pedal into the, from the shoe into the pedal. So it's just really important to get something that's quite thin so you're not losing energy while you're doing that. You know, thick socks. Um, you lose a little bit of energy pushing through them. It's not like running where you need that padding. Uh, cycling, sh cycling socks, you just want to, you know, have a little bit more on the pedal than, than running shoes, all right? So those are cycling socks. Um, and obviously you can wear them around the campsite afterwards. So take a couple of pairs. Now arm warmers and leg warmers. I never leave home without arm warmers and leg warmers when I go away. Arm warmers are great. Uh, you wear them with the summer jersey. Uh, when it gets hot, you just roll them down your sleeve. When it gets colder, you just roll them back up again. Uh, they're great. Uh, if you finish with them for the day, you just um, you just roll them up, and uh, I just roll them up like this. Just roll them up like that. All right, and then they just go in my back pocket. All right, uh, and uh, same goes for leg warmers. All right, great first thing in the morning. Keep your keep your knees warm. All right, they've got little zips at the bottom of them. These ones here, little zips at the bottom. Always important to undo the zips before you try and take them off because you never, you never get that off <laughs> without undoing your zip. All right, um, leg warmers. Again, same thing. You know, when you finish with them, just uh, roll them up and uh, you just put them in your back pocket. All right. Uh, so now, I would also take along uh, booties. Uh, now I wear these, if you're not wearing cycling shoes then these aren't as important. Um, in fact, you won't need them at all. But if you are wearing cycling shoes, cycling shoes are historically vented these days so they get really cold um, uh, when it's quite cold. So I would wear booties when it, when it drops below 10 degrees, I'd bring out my booties and that's what I would wear. So booties uh, over, the, over the cycling shoes and also long finger gloves, all right? And both of these garments are made out of um, a windstopper material, so that just helps, you know, acts like the wind vest, so um, reduces the chance of wind chill, all right? So then we come to more of my personal items. So I've got a cap here, now, you know, just a standard cap, and, uh, you know, you can make a choice on whether you want that or this. You can take both, I usually take both, but uh, you can wear a cycling cap all the time just when you're around the camp, just protects your head from being sunburnt. Um, shades your eyes, obviously, on the hotter days. Uh, just a pair of merino wool socks. Um, now I would take these on, on the colder nights uh, to sleep with, but uh, the great thing about these is merino wool, you, you know, you can wear them and uh, they don't smell up. You can, you know, wash them every couple of days instead of every day. So they're a really good item. Um, underwear, really important. All right, so I've got three pairs here. And then I've just got a merino wool uh, top, all right? And just, just, you know, if it's quite cold at night, I'd put this on. Uh, that'll also go into my sleeping bag liner, the sleeping bag cover, and I'll sleep. That, that'll act as, you know, as, act as a pillow, all right? So I'll sleep on that. All right. So that covers off most of the clothing that I would take. Now, obviously, you know, you've got your own personal 
preferences around clothing that you would want to take. So, um, you know, that's, that's what I would take, all right? Um, now, I've got a couple more items in the bag. First thing is this. Now, this is, um, this is a sports towel. So I would use this instead of a standard bath towel. It uh, just packs up quite night neatly and it's fairly fairly long and there's a reason for that. I actually use this quite a lot when I'm out racing and I want to change on the side of the road after the race. So it just it means I can just wrap it around myself. I've got a little bit of privacy um, and um, you know I can get changed without embarrassing myself or people around me. So um, not to say that you're going to be doing that but um, the reason why you would uh, take this along with you is that you know use it as a bath towel uh, when you have a shower in the morning all right or in the evening okay so the other things the other thing I've got here I've got a little backpack all right now I, I actually like to take a little backpack away with me when I'm traveling and the reason for that is that it gives me the opportunity to be able to do you know day trips and stuff like that or trip you know down to the local shop or whatever uh, and I've got a little backpack instead of taking all this stuff with me so I can just isolate a bit of gear with me a uh, little backpack, okay. So in, inside the backpack, just a couple more items. Um, I've got um, in here. I've got um, my mobile phone. Now, the mobile phone here, uh, it's in a plastic bag. That's really important. When you're out riding, uh, I always put my mobile phone in a little plastic bag like that, and that's um, that stops the phone from getting dredged in sweat because when you're riding sometimes you get a bit sweaty so it just protects it from the sweat and it also when it rains um, it obviously protects it from getting wet okay and electronic wet, uh, equipment doesn't like getting wet so, so it's a little plastic bag you just put it in there and seal it up and, uh, and that means it's nice and waterproof all right so and look if it is raining I actually put it up that way so the water doesn't run into the top of it if it does run in so that's quite sealed it's quite sealed okay um, now inside here I also got a couple of other things that I always take with me when I go for a ride a little bit of coffee money so that's really important and the other thing is just a little bit of an ID tag so that's just got my name on it contact phone number and emergencies um, and in my mobile phone I've got my my ice contact details so in there is um, uh, a contact called ICE, and that's, um, that's got my wife's telephone number in, so if in case I can't talk and I'm on the side of the road, uh, falling off my bike or had an accident, um, then the ICE number, which I've mentioned in another video, is very important. So make sure when you've got a mobile phone, you've got an ICE number in there in case of emergencies. That was, that's what ICE stands for. All right, so great. So it's a mobile phone. Uh, and the great thing about this is it also acts as a, a video and, and a camera. So, you know, you don't have to take a separate cam with you. Now, uh, wallet. Now, that's really important. And look, if you have forgotten some stuff, I like to take my credit card. Credit cards are great. All right. They're really good. Um, and they, uh, they obviously, if you need to buy anything, you can use your credit card. I usually like to clean out my wallet. Uh, so I've got a whole lot of crazy cards in here at the moment, flybys and and uh, air point, you know, air flying cards and things. So I usually take those out, just have the bare minimum in there, a little bit of cash, uh, and the arbitrary, you know, uh, photo of the wife, uh, you know, your kids, uh, puppy dog, those sort of things. So that's the wallet. Now, uh, I've got a little bag here with my electronic equipment in it. I'll try and keep this to a minimum. Uh, if you're going to be taking a mobile phone, then uh, there's a couple of things that you can take along with you. One of the first most important things is the charger. Don't leave home without it. If you're going to take your phone, make sure you take your charger. All right. Some of the phones have particular special chargers, and sometimes you may not find a person if you do forget it. That's um, you know with a charger. So that's the first thing. Uh, ear earphones. Now um, I never ride with earphones in. I use these off the bike, so I, I never ride with earphones. It's, I don't think I don't think it's very safe to do so. Um, I know there's some people out there that like to ride with earphones, but personally, I, I think that's a bad idea. Um, but I use that. You know, I've got some music on my on my phone, so I can use it as a bit of entertainment. I've got some videos and stuff there. I can watch those and things uh, in the evenings. All right, and just around charging. Uh, you know, when you get to the end of the where you get to the campsite. 
there is facilities to be able to charge your electronic devices. Uh, it's usually a gold coin donation, so, so bear that in mind. Now, uh, by computer, all right, so Garmin, you get about three days out of these before you need to charge them. So, uh, so it's important if you do take that, make sure you take your USB charger, all right? You, sorry, the USB charger, which, um, so you need the cable. And um, I'll take a specific, so that's my iPhone charger, and I'll take a USB charger as well. That means I can plug both of them in, charge both devices, means I don't have to wait for one to charge and then the other to charge. I can charge both at the same time, all right? And this one's actually, I managed to get this one, it's quite a, quite a light one, it's a very small USB charger, so, you know, not a lot, not a lot of weight. Uh, it doesn't take up too much room. Uh, if I'm going to be taking my bike computer, then I'll take my heart rate monitor strap, all right? So don't forget that. Uh, otherwise, you might as well not take your heart rate monitor. All right. um, now, the other thing I've got here, if you are going to take a camera, you know, a little sports camera, nice little small one. Um, generally, you know, your phone's usually pretty good these days. Uh, if you do take your camera, then make sure that you take the appropriate um, charger as well. So, you know, take your camera, you've got to take your charger. So, so just remember that. Um, because you know you get three days out of your charge, uh, out of your phone, and then you've got to charge it up. And if you don't take your charger, well, it just becomes something that's pretty useless after three days. So, so that really covers off some of the beer things that that I would take uh, with me. Um, look, I know that everybody's you know has their own personal tastes around what the, what sort of gear they would take. Um, that's the sort of gear that I would take away for for the uh, Great Victorian bike ride. So I hope that's been useful. Uh, and I hope you have a great time. Okay, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about the bike. Now, uh, this, is, this is my bike. This is the bike that I ride. And I just wanted to cover off some of the important things to consider uh, when, you, uh, when you're going on to an event. So the first, first most important thing is that you want to get your bike checked out uh, by your local bike shop um, you know, a couple of weeks beforehand. And just make sure that it's all running nice. Uh, you know, brake blocks are good. Uh, brakes are good. Tires. Tires are very important. Very important to make sure that your tires are really good quality. Uh, I generally like to uh, replace my tires a couple of weeks before a big event, uh, and that way, uh, and also check them before I go. Make sure that we haven't got any bad cuts in them or anything. If you've got a bad cut in your tire, it's always a always a bad omen, um, and uh, it's important to get that replaced. So, if there's a cut in your tire and um, and it's cut all the way through, and you can see the inner tube then you should replace it, all right? Uh, that's just not, it's just going to cause you lots and lots of issues. Uh, you'll get multiple punches. And the last thing you want to do is get punches. It's going to destroy the enjoyment of the event. So, um, so if you have a major mechanical your bike or you get, you know, lots of punches because your tires are worn out, uh, look, that, that's just going to dull the, you know, dull the amount of enjoyment you're going to get. So you don't have to go, you know, you don't have to have those issues. Good quality tires um, that aren't worn and just a well-serviced bike. So, uh, look, I uh, always carry two drink bottles with me and it's really important to make sure that those are full uh, before you leave in the morning. Uh, make sure your bike's obviously set up and I've talked a little bit about that in previous videos. Now, there's two important things that I always take with me on a ride. Uh, the first is a bicycle pump, all right? And um, uh, this is just a little pump. Uh, this, is, this is designed for road bikes. This is designed uh, to produce high pressure. It's got a thin barrel, all right? So now you get pumps with big, thick barrels, and they're designed for mountain bikes where you need a lot of air to be put into the tire, but lower, lower pressures. So, so there's two types of pumps out there. Pumps with a thinner barrel, they're for road bikes, and pumps with a thicker barrel, and they're for the sort of mountain bike type or hybrid tires, all right? So that's the first thing. Uh, the next thing is uh, always take a spare inner tube with me. Uh, and you want to take those with you on the ride. Uh, so I've just got a very lightweight uh, spare inner tube in here and a couple of tyre levers. All right, so just make sure that you do understand uh, before you go how to, how to replace your inner tube. Um, so that's just, that's just a little, little bag and it just sits in there. Very easy to get to. Uh, and. Uh, there it is. Just straps on like that. All right, so nice and easy. Uh, some people take tools with them. Um, generally, if your bike's well serviced, you won't really need tools with you. Um, and there's usually, you know, uh, support on the road anyway. So, 
So, but uh, some people, you know, they like to tools and there's no problem with that. Uh, always have a rear light. Uh, sometimes you're riding through fog in the morning and that sort of thing, so it just helps with visibility. Uh, I've got a front light on this as well. Uh, most of the time you're riding during the day, so you, you probably won't need a front light, um, but uh, I've got one on this bike. And um, that's really covers it off for the bike. Now, uh, the other thing I wanted to go into was uh, was pedals, and and I'm going to just I'm just going to cover that off uh, in the next section. So the other thing I wanted to cover off is uh, is pedals, and uh, this is my wife's bike. She she rides a nice giant, again two drink bottles, rear light. She's got a little bag here with her inner tube in it. Um, you know, well serviced, good tyres. Um, so pretty much the same sort of setup. Now. With um, removing your pedals, and you, you'll, you'll need to do this uh, when you're getting your bike transported. Um, the pedal's always at the top, the crank at the top. The pedal's always um, always undo uh, towards the back of the bike. All right. So in this particular case, they just undo that way. So that's how you undo the pedal. All right. Now. Um, and it's the same for the other side, all right? So again, there's the crank, all right? Put the pedal, pedal spanner in, and it just undoes, undoes that way. Now, um, I generally, when I tighten these up, uh, they just come off just normally. When I tighten them up, just make sure they don't I tighten them up firmly, but not really, really. You don't need to tighten them up super, super tight. Some people get a bit enthusiastic with tightening up their pedals. I just make sure that they're fairly firm, but not super, super tight. And the other thing to remember is that um, there's a left and a right hand pedal, all right? So the thread's different, left and right hand pedal. So usually on the pedals themselves, they've got little markings on them, left and L, L for left and R for right. So um, if you find that the pedal is not going in to, uh, to the crank very well, um, just check that you've got the right pedal, that you're putting the right pedal on the right side of the bike and the left pedal on the left side of the bike. If you try and force it in, you'll strip the thread and then, then you'll need to get your cranks replaced. So, and that's very expensive. So just remember that the pedals, they have um, left and right thread and that the, um, they um, undo that way, all right, towards the back of the bike and to tighten them up, you bring them towards the, the front of the bright, okay? So that's how they work. Um, and that's really it. <laughs>